Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, April the 17th. Well, we've got producers taking storm and fire damage inventory uh, in the northern plains in the Midwest and, and down in Oklahoma where the fires were so bad. Uh, the first day they could kind of get back out there. Uh, did some of that Sunday, but uh, get out there and, and see how bad it is, how many head they lost. Uh, try to get some feed to those cattle. Uh, get them up uh, closer to some to some facilities in case they need to treat some of them and uh, just uh, really seeing how bad things were whenever it really got worse the worst uh, on uh, uh, the, the meat of your weekend there but look at the board on uh, Monday June live cattle up 52 cents to end the day at 104.17 your April spot live cattle futures were up more than that early but uh, closed up 60 cents to end the day at 117.15 and that's still more than two dollars behind what your cash market is here we're on the back side of april and and those two got to come together and, and i don't know that it's going to be the fat cattle market coming down i think of course this spot uh, futures is going to have to run a little bit to catch it because we're still in in tight market ready supplies we've had a big storm set the weights back and set those cattle back quite a bit and uh, I think your, your, your current board is going to have to rush a little bit to get close to that before we get into where uh, it needs to be matching up. But your May feeder cattle uh, steady at 140.37 on Monday. April was down 15 cents at 139.22. Look at the weighted average on last week's fat cattle trade on 80,500 head which was lighter than what we uh, thought maybe we would get. We thought as, as aggressive as your Packers got and on that higher market on Friday, they might have moved more cattle than that, but uh, may not be a lot more cattle than that to move right now. And, and uh, you look at last week's lighter run in the five area feeding region of 77,500 head and compared that to the same week a year ago, which was nearly 100,000 and we'd like to see that. But you remember we had uh, several of your producers selling for short term forward delivery here over the last several weeks because they, uh, they, they believed what they read uh, about this big wall of cattle which uh, we are looking at, at heavier significantly heavier numbers of market ready cattle here coming but we just we've had several things mess that up and this storm is going to be another one of them but uh, they sold some cattle for you know two to four week delivery here over the last several weeks a lot of those cattle bring close to 114 and now the, the, some of them will be delivering this week and next week on a market that's $1.20 uh, or $1.22 depending on where you live. But you look at that, uh, your live steered heifers selling from 117 to 120 in the Southern Plains. That 120 was reserved for those that held out until Friday. Uh, 122 uh, bulk of the trade in the Northern Plains on a live basis there with a weighted average price of 119.49. Uh, so you can see how much of that higher price there was. That was uh, $2.76 higher than the weighted average from the previous week. Your dress sales uh, didn't have hardly any dress trade before Friday. And so it was mostly all at that higher number, mostly 190 with a few sales up to 192. Uh, I'll tell you how close it was to 190. Your weighted average on dress steers in the five area feeding region was 189.97. So that's $2.23 higher than the weighted average from the previous week. But uh, this market's been fairly uh, resilient. Every time we think that uh, we've got nowhere to go but down, we keep finding reasons to, to come back. And, and that's kind of the way this market has been for a while. Uh, you know, depending on what you look at, you look at the board and everybody says you see some some technical uh, uh, charts and, and some gaps and, and uh, patterns in there that uh, make you think this thing is, is going to recover some more. If everybody's looking at the same chart and they're all reading it the same way, you better get on ride with them. But uh, and fundamentally, uh, we're kind of a mixed bag. Yes, we know we've got some heavier supplies of market ready cattle coming down the pike. Sure, a lot of them are calf feds. It's taken a while for them to get done. They've had a lot of storm on them up in the northern plains. They've had a lot of mud to pull. Uh, they've, they've had a lot of losses due to the storms up there. Not enough to, to, to peel it off to where it's not going to be heavier numbers. But uh, still, you know, we're, we're doing pretty well. And, and a lot of times those, those big walls of cattle that they talk about 
are not nearly as fierce whenever they show up as what uh, everybody fears. But you look at the feeder market on Monday, in the afternoon on Monday, real-time index on Beef Market Central was sitting at 138.11, which was 27 cents higher than it closed at the end of last week, uh, but uh, heavily influenced from Joplin Regional Stockyards as they were selling their big bunches there earlier in the day. And, uh, you know, I've talked about that before, not disparagingly, but Joplin Regional Stockyard sells commodity cattle. Uh, they're, they're not worried about uh, the making the paper there. Uh, there are a lot of backgrounded cattle in that area. They're dealing with fescue pastures, which uh, you mentioned have, have not really, they've greened up, but they haven't grown any. And uh, they just, uh, you guys have a lot of cattle turned out right now. And usually you get into this time of year and you've got stockers turned out on fescue pastures and the cattle can't keep up with it. But now, uh, since the temperatures have been so, so low and there hasn't been a lot of sunshine your cattle are kind of out running the pastures and they're sitting there waiting for the grass to grow so they can eat it but that could turn out to be a good thing uh, especially light cattle like those fescue pastures when they're soft and tender and that grass uh, a lot of times whenever you get into the spring if, if you've got a warm spring that grass is growing so fast that the cattle can't keep up with it and then it gets kind of uh, rough and and uh, and they're not real wild about that rank fescue when it gets up there pretty tall and hard to eat. But uh, you look at your uh, big markets there, Oklahoma City, 8,100 head, uh, selling those feeder cattle two to five bucks higher. First good run they've had in Oklahoma City for quite a while and your buyers were waiting on that. Calves were tested, were two to three dollars higher, but they were selling a lot of droves of yearlings early in the day in Oklahoma City and getting along good with them. Uh, like I said, Joplin had a good run there, 5,000 head, and, and uh, you know, just uh, not saying anything bad about Joplin, but they're not posting big prices up there because, as I said, they're selling backgrounded cattle. Uh, the producers in that area, they, they try to get those cattle bought as uh, reasonably as they can, put the pounds on them as cheap as they can, and then get them sold good. But, uh, you know, it it uh, heavily influenced your RTI which was higher but only 27 cents higher but uh, unlike some of your markets up in the northern plains Joplin is not giving out blue ribbons when you sell the cattle there they're giving out checks at the end of the day and those producers a whole lot rather have those but individual quotes there on Monday Russell Iowa look at this quote 73 head of 699 pound steers and not sure if the owner was over there lifting on the ring scales as hard as he could trying to keep a six front number in front of that weight there but those 699 pound steers bring 169.75 Joplin Regional Stockyards good test on commodity cattle 130 head of 798 pound steers bring 137.75 that's your feeder flash for Tuesday